You're listening to the Big Blue Podcast. I'm Greg Stone, Metro Campus Provost, here with my co-host as always, Dr. Lee Goodson, President of Tulsa Community College. Good morning, Dr. Goodson. Good morning. How are you this morning, Greg? I am doing well. And today we're at Southeast Campus for History Day competition. Yeah. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, it won't be History Day any longer. But we're here for History Day, which is always an exciting day at Southeast Campus. Uh, and our guest today is Mona Easterling, who is the AEP Credits Count Program Manager. Good morning, Mona. Good morning. Thanks for being here with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and uh, we have a lot of really interesting things to talk about in terms of AEP credit counts, um, which Dr. Goodson, I know you were heavily involved with. And in fact, yes. we got this grant right we, after, right after you I came started. To and I was still on the Tulsa Public Schools Board of Education when I started. So I'd stayed on that board for just an extra, I think, eight months while oh, we, wow. because we were searching for a superintendent and it wasn't a good time to transition. And so this was so exciting because I remember, you know, I, I, I was kind of on um, both sides of the. Yes of the equation and it was thrilling so and I remember the governor mm -hmm. came to right. Rogers College High when we celebrated and that was very exciting and of course Stuart Solomon the great leader there for AEP here in Oklahoma and uh, Carol Huff Hicks was also part of that part of that project so it's great and yes. anyway I know you're going to talk about some of those things so I'll, I'll quit jabbering about that but anyway yeah okay. exciting uh, yeah, do, um, Mona, tell us a little bit about the program. Kind of remind us, for people who maybe haven't thought about it in a while, about what the program is, um, how it came about, what the, the AEP connection, where the funding comes from, just some things that you feel like people need to be reminded of uh, about what this program is. Absolutely. Thank you so much. American Electric Power, AEP, is the parent company of PSO Oklahoma. And as Dr. Goodson said, we had Carol Huff Hicks, who was the manager of community relations there at PSO Oklahoma that was so excited to help TCC apply for this opportunity. The national headquarters for American Electric Power is in Columbus, Ohio. They had had some issues in their public education system that the leaders there of AEP were very involved in. And during those issues, they came to see the value of dual enrollment. So dual enrollment is when a high school student stays on their high school real estate and in that public space are able to earn college credits through a local community college. And AEP decided that would be something that the Credits Count program could address. And the AEP Foundation began pursuing that in Columbus and then expanding. So they, they were able to get that grant funded and AEP was able to share with the TCC Foundation in a way to build those programs of support for dual enrollment through TCC. Second largest grant we've ever received here at Tulsa Absolutely. Community College. Mm -hmm. So that was, and that how, was a really how long How large was the grant? Three million. Three million, million. okay. Five yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Great community investment. So, um, so when it started, I know that Tulsa Public Schools and Tulsa Community College got together and said, okay, what can we achieve with this program? And so some of the numbers that we thought we could get to were aspirational. I'm yes. going to say um, we were going to interact with 3,000 middle school students with STEM experience. Uh, 1,000 students were going to be assessed for college readiness. And then 800 students were expected to participate in the Summer Bridge program. Talk to us about how we've done in uh, reaching some of those goals. Absolutely. So those numbers that you mentioned were all indicative of the life of the grant over the complete okay. five years. Okay. So, so we haven't finished yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 2015 was our planning year. We had a half okay. year to plan and then implementation began in 2016. Okay. So in terms of 2016, in many ways we're on track. Of course, we would like to reach more students than yeah. we have, yeah. but we've had really good success. Right now, um, when we look back at 2016, overall, we were able to reach about 12,000 students in wow. some kind of way in the public school That's system. That's amazing. <laughs> and so we're exceeding some goals, We obviously. are exceeding some yes. goals in terms of contact. Okay. And we're learning how to build those middle school STEM experiences in conjunction with the administration at each school site okay. for maximum efficiency. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Wow, that's that's awesome. And you brought up a good point, and that is a planning year. So many times, um, 
really experienced grant tours and grantees know that you have to have that planning year. You can't do it without it. And so it's so awesome to say up front, okay, this is what it's going to take to pay for the planning year. Mm -hmm. So great work on that. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, go ahead. Uh, the people who were planning this grant were the ones who had that in place yeah. before I even arrived, and that was very helpful because TCC as an institution and TPS have, as an institution have so many moving parts yep. right. without yep. some time to plan. Yeah, large organizations. <laughs> right, well, and let's talk about that. Uh, can you kind of break down for us what, what's our responsibility and what's TPS's responsibility? I mean, how is, how is the partnership working um, who's kind of doing what because of those moving parts like you said it, it's it'd be complicated anyway but yes. considering how large both institutions are it, it gets extra complicated absolutely so TCC has its own concurrent department and they are in charge of concurrent enrollees throughout the region and our work is exclusively with Tulsa Public Schools okay. so we function within the public schools and we have a support role so some of the role we have involves face-to-face -face support in the classroom and with tutoring. And the role that we've been able to acquire in the past year is that of financial support. Mm -hmm. For some students um, were restricted in their ability to take classes because of cost, and we've been able to step in and help cover some of that cost for STEM-related courses. However, when I look back at that relationship, like you said, TPS has a superstar in Lisa Reynolds who is their dual enrollment coordinator, and she has been wonderful to work with. So in many, in, you know, of course, they provide the physical space, and she's done a magnificent job of that. At Rogers College High, we have that hub that I know mm -hmm. you've yeah. seen, mm -hmm. and yeah. it is a wonderful physical space. And the students I know and deal with on a daily basis, they literally see that space as a haven. Mm -hmm. When they are in that space, they are TCC students. It is a TCC-designated space. The classroom spaces are separate than the student union type space where they can interact and study in groups, and it's a great benefit to the students we have there. So TPS has done a great job at Rogers of providing us with a physical space to be. Yeah, that's good. Well, we our guest today on the Big Blue Podcast is Mona Easterling. We're glad you're here, manager of the AEP Credits Counts program, and we're here at Southeast Campus today where History Day is taking place. And I had the opportunity to take a tour and meet with some of the students. I think we have hundreds mm -hmm. of middle school and high school students here today. Don't you think so? There, there are a lot of people here. Yeah, it's yeah, really great yeah. to respond to. Lots of excitement to with the with the students. Okay. Um, so part of the interest in this program or the purpose of this program is to introduce students to careers in STEM. Talk to us a little bit about uh, why that's so important and what, what kind of actions that we take as educators help students become inspired about STEM careers. I think that STEM is so important right now because the global marketplace is changing so rapidly and STEM opportunities are changing so rapidly. There's so much crossover between disciplines and crossover for interested students in STEM. Most of them are gonna be pursuing careers that don't even exist yet. So the turnover in this field is so high in terms of dynamic change that it's important that students understand um, some of the families they come from, especially you know, our population and myself personally being first generation, they may not know a STEM professional mm -hmm. in their family life. So right. we love to get the students in a place where they can see and act, interact with STEM professionals for the purpose of learning these people aren't as different as me. That's right. And those students can see what this guy day does is not that different than what my dad does. Mm -hmm. And so we love being able to show students those types of social things, but in terms of STEM education, we know that from the TCC perspective, from any kind of educational perspective, we want the rigor to be there. And so we are there in a, a role of support so that these students can see that we don't expect them to be able to attain this level of rigor without assistance. And we want them to see a friendly face and know that someone is there to come alongside them and help them address the rigors of academic Absolutely. life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's such a long game, yes. too. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking to middle schoolers, it's, it's hard for them to see that, especially if they're first-generation uh, prospective college students. And it's interesting, some of the um, 
you know, we, we have the opportunity sometimes to hear from the governor on the needs of the state. And, it, you know, our leader at Tinker Air Force Base, pro one of the largest employers in the state, has said, I could hire every graduating engineer from the University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University every year, and it wouldn't be enough. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's how far behind we are on STEM production, right, in terms of people qualified well, to fill those roles. Right, which is why it's so critical to get those students when they're in young. In the pipeline, yes. and, absolutely. And help them see that because we know that if we wait until they're juniors or seniors in high school, it's too late yeah. for the vast majority of only them. Only the yes. first generation kids will, I mean, only the... Uh, the the first generation kids won't necessarily be able to see themselves in that role, right, right. and so it's so important to to start talking to them early. Mona, you mentioned too that you were a first generation college student, as was I. I think you and I have a similar yes. educational background. We both were students here. We both went on to NSU. Your background's in biomedical research. What interested you in wanting to come back to work here at Tulsa Community College after you'd been a student here, and and particularly what interests you? just personally in helping to reach students who are as young as those middle-aged students we've been talking about? For me personally, I was a work-study student when I came to TCC, and I began working um, in the Honors Department under Susan O'Neill, and in that way I came to learn more about the institutional culture, and I was delighted. And when I think of TCC uh, in terms of my own experience, TCC was an open door like on the ground level for me as a first generation student. It was a door I could see and I could walk through to reach my educational goals. And I want now to make sure that other students in a similar situation can see that door. Some people don't know it's there. Some people may know it's there, but it looks really far away and fuzzy. So for the students who don't know it's there, I want them to see it. And for the students for whom it seems to be behind a haze, I want to help clarify this um, position I have now holds so much meaning for me. I am able to interact with students on a personal level. Um, just now telling you that, I got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. I had yeah. a student come to me um, at the Annex and mention to me in private, um, they had some concerns about funding their TCC education after graduation. An amazing student. Um, because they happen to be not documented. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to talk to that student and get some help from some other departments here at the institution just to provide some direction. But those kind of things, I knew as a um, biomedical student when I was working in those areas and in the bench, I began to realize that my passion was not just pure science, but it was the interface of science and communication. Mm -hmm. And so... I love talking to non-scientists about science, and it's fine with me if that non-scientist is a seventh grader or an eighth grader, and they, uh, they have a lot of passion and curiosity just mm -hmm. right there under scientific ideals anyway. So I'm, I'm really engaged by that portion of my job, nice. and that's why I'm here. Talk to us a little bit, you know, um, XAM Black, who also works in um, with the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance and this program as well, and, and you, and then there's others in the community. And um, talk to us about what's going on with STEM regionally beyond just the AEP program. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And, you know, when I started here at TCC in 2007, there were not a lot of public education research opportunities. There were some in the private uh -huh. sector but in as, as terms of public so that has grown so dynamically since 2007 we have research going on right in Broken Arrow at NSU as Dr. Stone mentioned we have a lot of opportunities through o OSU CHS mm -hmm. that weren't there and in the engineering field at OSU Tulsa yep. with the Helmrick Research Center yeah. mm -hmm. so when I was a student here at TCC I had internship opportunities at both OU and OSU. Those benefited me tremendously. And so now when I'm talking to students, not only can I convey that, but I can also use the networking I was able to do as a student to provide opportunities for them. We have a partner at the med school who volunteers with our students every week, and he is with our students helping them learn more about STEM and seeing the faces of diversity in the STEM field right here in Tulsa. So we are very excited about some of the things that are going on to increase STEM access right here in our community.
community. And it hasn't been very long since Tulsa started its own research day. Yes. We have our own That's research right. day every year, right? And, and most recently we've had it at the Center for Creativity. That's right. And so, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. It is. Well, Mona, before we say goodbye, we want to ask you the question we ask all of our guests at the end, at the end of their interviews, uh, what we call the big question. If you could go back and give some advice to your 18-year-old self, what would that advice be? I would tell my 18-year-old self that it is a both-and universe. It is not an either-or universe. And physics demonstrated that. Physics was able to demonstrate that light is both a wave and a particle. And when I'm with students now, I really encourage them to embrace that ideal. Um, you know, as a first-generation student, there were some there are some times when you're continuing your education that you almost feel like you're betraying where you came from. And so one of the only ways I was able to make it through was to remind myself consistently that it's a both-and universe. That is one of the best <laughs> ones we've say. ever, ever heard. <laughs> I mean, there have been some really yeah. good ones, but I... I'm going to use that. You're going to hear that again. <laughs> right. And if I remember, I'll also say your name with it. Right? But, but if not, you'll have to forgive me ahead of time. Wow. That is, I'm going to use that with my kids tonight. <laughs> yeah. Do. Exactly. Yeah, because we've got exactly. a situation at home where I'm like, <laughs> good. Thank wow. you so much. No wonder. I get That's it good. now. Well, thank you, Mona Easterling, for being our guest here. You've been listening to the Big Blue Podcast coming to you today from History Day at Southeast Campus. I know there's a lot of volunteers out there. Mm -hmm. We want to thank Mona Easterling for joining us, and we want to thank you for listening. I'm Lee Goodson here with Greg Stone, and we hope you'll join us next time. Thanks, Greg. Goodbye.